everything just got too much. I had to sell the house. I lost my house. I managed to hold on to the business. I remember waking up in puddles of sweat every night. You have been with your wife now for how long? 25 years. We've been together since we were 17. Uh, without my wife, there's no way I'd be where I am. Anybody that's got a plan B fails because they always know they can go to plan B. This is going to work. That's what you have to say to yourself, Frankie. If they want to play the big game, the objective here is can you maintain your lifestyle if you shut your business off tomorrow? I don't know anybody that hasn't spent countless hours on something on one particular craft and hasn't succeeded. If they want to know the secret to success, that is the secret. That's what it is. Do not use your earned money to buy luxuries. Use passive income to buy your luxury. You had to check out the world tomorrow. You can't leave the Lamborghini. You can't leave the property. But you could leave just this one pearl of wisdom you know is going to impact every member of this audience listening right now. What would it be? So that together we have clarity, direction, and success way beyond what we ever previously thought possible. Here's your host, Frankie Lee. Quick one before we jump into this podcast, do me a solid favor, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and drop a comment below this video. If you're looking to remove images, videos, search results, or fake accounts online, go to contentremoval.com, but don't take my word for it. Here's some music. Frank, you're a fucking legend. I just saw this. Layla also thinks you're a legend, which in my mind means you're... <laughs> which, also, which means you're a double legend in my mind. If you get my wife to think you're a legend, then you're, you're extra cool in my mind. Dude, thank you so much, genuinely. That was um, such a pain. Guys, you do not know how excited I am today to bring you this podcast. I'm telling you now, this one, this one that I'm going to bring you today has took me around about 18 months to get locked in, locked and loaded to bring you this man. This this man, right? I talk about being more sourced than Nando's. This guy is the <laughs> king of the source game. An, uh, an unbelievable manufacturer who's built a what what most of us might consider a boring business, but something that has absolutely sent it on all levels. Peter Try, welcome to Thanks. the podcast, my Thanks man. Thanks for having me, brother. But I'm Thanks, so man. hyped you're here. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Uh, I'm happy to have you for obvious reasons. But, mate, you've smashed it on all levels, and I know how um, much adversity and hard work and dedication has gone into getting to where you are today. Mm. And obviously... You can speak into having a lot of investments You mm. can in property and commercial. You can speak into like building manufacturing. But I just want to give people an insight into your childhood. Obviously, um, mm. you probably got immigrant family mm. that came mm. over here. Yep. Give me a bit of a background into how you obviously came to Australia and, and obviously your family growing up and everything like that. Well, yeah, I'm of Greek heritage. Um, dad was a wolfie, worked at the wharfs for 40 odd years. Mum was a machinist. So I never had... Um, I guess no entrepreneur guidance. Uh, Dad um, was always living by paycheck, paycheck, you know what I mean? He had that workman's clock on, clock off mentality. Um, But he was great in money management, and that's what I learnt off Dad. Like he was, I think most Greeks, most ethnics, anybody that came over, because they came from a country that didn't didn't have much, as soon as they discovered money, they didn't want to let it go. And they kept saving and saving, but they didn't know why they were saving. And I guess that, that instilled that in us. But the problem was is um, that I remember Dad, he would always say to me, you know, um, be careful, don't speak, don't tell anyone what you're doing. You know, money doesn't grow on trees. But he never told me where money was. Like if money doesn't grow, where is it, Dad? Or if I don't speak to someone, that means I'm not networking, Dad. You know, um, and I soon discovered that money is in people's pockets. And all I've got to do is take it. And the way you take it is you've got to get into business because businessmen take money, employees make money. It's our job to take it and we pass it down to employees and they make it. Um, and that's, it, it, it took a while. It took a while for me to discover that and I dropped out of school at 16 and I was in and out of work. I was washing cars. I was doing whatever I had to do. I was hustling. I'm a massive, I mean, we were talking about it on the way up. I'm a massive entrepreneur fan. I love people when they actually give 100% effort into something. So I opened my first shop at 20 years old, just a couple of k's away from here on Bridge Road in Richmond, uh, first chicken bar. Kathy, my wife now, but girlfriend at the time, she was uh, at the bank, pulled her out of the bank. I said, you're coming with me. Um, and I opened my first shop and it did really well. And then I opened another few more shops. I ended up having five stores and things were good. Register was playing songs. That means cash was coming in. And I was in my mid-20s and things were great. Um, and then I sort of, I get bored very easily. It's because I want to constantly challenge myself, Frankie. And so then what happened was I, um, the margins were getting smaller and smaller in, the, in QSR. We call it quick serve restaurants. And 
I said, I need to get into, I, said, I love food, so I said, I still need to stay in food because that's my game, but I need to get into manufacturing because if I get into manufacturing, then I can start manipulating costs, I can start building products, and I can start creating my own margins. So you, you just wanted to access the manufacturing side of things so you could have more margin in what you did. Yeah, yeah, that, that was the purpose. That was initial purpose from the start um, because when you're, most restaurants and every restaurateur that's listening to this will agree that they're governed by the prices that are coming in the kitchen. And um, you, there's only so much you can put the price on the menu until a consumer is going to say, this is way too expensive, I'm not coming here again. But as a manufacturer, not an importer, I'm talking manufacturer, starting the product from zero, you can start controlling your cogs, which is your cost of goods. You can start controlling your cogs and you can start seeing that certain products have margin, certain products have great margin. The ones with great margin, they're the ones you need to focus on. And um, I've got a little factory in um, Reservoir, 10 k's away from here, and a um, little mixing machine. Me and Kathy would mix at night. Kids would be sleeping in the car. They still remember it till today. Kids would be sleeping in the car, and I'll be selling during the day, bucket by bucket, bucket by bucket. And back then, the rule was, it still is today, but I don't b- abide by this rule. But back then, they were called turning orders. So you'd go into a shop, introduce yourself, I love the product, and then you go to the distributor and say, look, this store wants to buy this product. You distribute in this area. You take my product. And I did that for a while. I wanted to stay loyal to all the distributors. I wanted to do the right thing. I didn't want to rock the boat. But what happened was I started to gain some traction. And then the big players, Master Foods Craft, they started seeing a little bit of market share that I was taking. And um, they started offering truck deals to the distributors. Really? To see how deep my pockets were. I said, who is this guy? Let's see how deep his pockets are. And they started offering truck deals. So they'd go around to all the distributors, truck deal, truck deal, truck deal. And this just break down what a truck deal is. Well, a truck deal is 20 pallets at a discounted price if you buy a truck. Right, okay. So 20 pallets of a particular sauce, mayonnaise, okay, at this price if you buy the truck deal. The reason why they gave truck deals is they knew that that distributor will only go through, let's say, five pallets a month. But if I lock in 20 with him, he won't buy off Peter for three, four months. And if I do that 10 times, Peter loses sales from each distributor. It was a great model. They don't buy you out anymore, mate. They'd rather spend $5 million and destroy you. Well, they give you 30 40 to get out. So, and that's what was happening. Little did I know, I, wasn't, I, wasn't, I was oblivious to it. But at the time, um, I thought the distributors would have my back, but they didn't. And I don't blame them. At the end of the day, they're there to make money. So what I did was, I remember um, coming home and I was so stressed Bills were catching up. Everything was just getting so expensive. I couldn't keep up with the leases in the factory, trucks, forklifts, machine lease, home loan at the time because I poured all my shop money into this because don't forget these guys are paying 30, 60, 90 days. There's no impulse here. So there's literally like all your cash flow is tied up. All your cash flow is on the street. All your cash flow is – all your cash flow is on the street. So it's not like the register's playing a song and there's cash. This is different. Um – yeah, and everything just got too much. I had to sell the house. I lost my house. I was 27 years old. I lost my house. Um, I managed to hold on to the business. But I, I, I remember waking up in puddles of sweat every night because I, I used to think to myself, these guys have got me and I've got no way out. And look, S- this is where success leaves clues and you need to pay attention of your surroundings. Because I remember selling the house and dad came past and being an old Greek, you know, he starts getting upset. Why are you selling the house and what's going on and da-da-da. I said, Dad, it has to go. Um, he had a ho- an old derelict home in West Heidelberg. You don't know the areas around here, but no. West Heidelberg is a bit, yeah. And um, I said, Dad, I just want to live there for a bit. I'll pay you some rent. I want to live there for a bit. I only could pay the rent for around three months. And then I said to him, Dad, just let me stay here for a bit so I can catch up. This house was bad. Like I remember going in the closet and there was mouse droppings on my tops. And I don't know how my wife put up with it. And two little kids too. Okay, I get in the car one morning and I'm driving to the factory. Kathy's dropped off the kids to school and she meets me at the factory. As I'm driving, I pull up at the lights and I look to the left of me, there's a little um, shopping centre and there was a Bataki truck there. Do you know Bataki? They, no. They're a small goods manufacturer. Right, okay. Oh, they're a big company. They turn out close to three, four hundred million. Okay, they're a Melbourne-born company. Very great, a great company. And um, 
That Pataki truck, as I turned and I looked at this Pataki truck, I see a guy come out. He grabbed, had a box. He goes into the deli, comes back out, jumps in the truck, gone. I'm talking within five, six minutes, Frankie, gone. And I'm looking at this guy. And something just clicked. I get to the factory, I go to Kathy, listen, we're changing strategies. So I said, I'm putting vans on the road. I'm not distributing to distributors anymore. I'm going direct. I'm building the relationship with the customer. They're going to get to know who Peter is. Okay? I'm building the relationship with the customer and I'm going to pass on that 30% that the distributor wants to make. I'm going to pass on as a saving to the customer. So that way I'm cheaper than the majors. So you literally change the model by, changed- by, by obviously the brands now you've gone into like, you're nearly in receivership basically because you're obviously bankrupt. I was, I was yeah. I only had 120 grand in my name and I sold the house for 1.1 million. In and 2007, 1.1 million. Not now. We're talking 2007, one point. I was, I was a high, probably one of the highest selling houses in Thornbury at the time. So, so, you'd, so you'd built yourself a relative form of what you thought success was at the time. Yeah. You've now been humbled because you realise you're in the wrong model. And then you're going down the street and as, you, as you're going down the street, like divine inspiration often does, it comes to us in certain ways. Like there's, the, there's ways the world tries to tell us the, the path that we should be taking, the, par- the path of less resistance for you. Yeah. And, you know, what, when it comes to business, it's all about the model you run because mm. you can run, there's models and then there's models, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and you, you, just were, you just were in the wrong boat, rowing mm. down the, you were rowing down the river. I was, was, doing, I was doing the traditional route. That's what I was doing, the traditional route. That's what manufacturers still do today. They still do that. They still do turning orders. They still rely on distributors. I changed the model. I went back to Bataki days, Primo, uh, Moratus. Um, I'm talking about classic companies, um, Original Juice. These guys in Melbourne and Sydney, these guys changed the game. Because when you've got vans on the road and you're delivering to customers direct, you somewhat control your product now. You don't care about distributors, what they say and what they... They can't say he's out of stock, he's not in stock, he's too expensive. No, I'm dealing with the customer direct. The customer knows me. So I was passing on savings to the customer. The cu- then the business just started going up, 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 up. More vans on the road, up, up, up. Okay? Branded, the vans are branded. Now they get to know the company. And then I sat one day and I said, okay, we're going tra- we're gaining traction now. Okay, distributors are ringing me saying, oh, you're in my shop. What are you doing in my shop? You should be coming through me. No, no, I'm not coming through you anymore. I did the right thing at the start. Now it's game on. Okay. And then I said, I need to be on the counters because I was pro- primarily in the kitchen. So you were, pr- you were primarily making buckets of product. That's it. And now you're talking about putting it in bottles so it can be displayed. So you're displaying your brand to the everyday man on the street that's walking in. So they, so they, now, cr- they now create an urgency to say, okay. Who we, is this guy? Who, if, 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 the, if this brand's on in the restaurant, is in the shop, is in the takeaway, mm. can I go and buy that from the supermarket? Yeah, well, no one, supermarket, well, it's not only that, it's they didn't know who we were. We were producing mayonnaise and sauces in 20 kilo buckets for kitchens, okay? They were going in salads, but, and everyone was loving it, but they didn't know it was us. So I said, I had needed to be on the shelf, I needed to be on the counter, I needed people to see who we were. So I was the first to put dipping tubs on QSR counters. I'm the first to do it, okay? So we put the peri peris, the aiolis on shop counters. The minute I did that, everybody started knowing who I was. Everybody started knowing ape food. We're talking airline catering companies were calling me. We're talking salad. You know the salad bowls you see in supermarkets with the little sachet of the dressing? You do all them. Most of those are us. You, we were, we still are in, obviously, we, Costco noticed us. Costco Australia, Costco New Zealand. That's because we're on counters and all these procurement guys, supply chain managers, executives, they're going to their local shops and they're seeing our sources on the counters. So exposure was a big thing. And, and that's how the company just started growing. We ended up doing, we were doing six, 700,000 units just in cups. We've obviously grown now because we're, we're part of a national, not national, sorry, global giant. Costco's a global, not a national, it's a global giant. And the numbers are growing. But it took a process of me seizing an opportunity, okay, success leaves clues, look at what other companies, successful companies are doing and implement it in my company. That's why when people say to me, Frankie, what's the key to success, Peter? 
I get that all the time. And I say, mate, there's no fucking key to success. It's a combination. It's numbers. It's a combination. You're unlocking a fucking vault. You haven't got one key. You're going to go one number. And then, you know, you've seen in the movies how they dial yeah, back two yeah, numbers. Yeah, yeah. You're going to go one number, then you go to the next number. Because that's what you're having. You're having your triumphs. You're having your, you know, you're having your ups, your downs. You're having your moments where, am I doing the right thing? That's how business is, and that's how everybody should look at business, that if you're an entrepreneur fan like me, there's no end game. We were talking about it before. A hundred percent, but if you were, if you, obviously there's a lot of entrepreneurs listening to this, a lot of people mm. that want more in life, more in a business, and everything like that. How, what, in order for them to reassess where they're at right now and kind of see these hidden opportunities and what they've got, what, what is your strategy for them to be able to see these hidden opportunities and see these hidden gems. Because at the time, you were so blinkered by being involved in this niche and, and the way it was done for years and years. You were so blinkered like a blinkered horse, which is what a lot of people tell people to do. Go in on one thing, blinkers on, blah, blah, blah. Purpose. Yep. Be, they're going in one direction, Peter, but how, how can they just take those blinkers off for a moment, see the whole pie, and then, and then, and then literally like see where the hidden opportunities are? Well, let me tell you something, Frankie. Most of the times... Today it's difficult for them because there's so much going on. There's so many distractions. There wasn't many distractions back then. So many distractions now with social media, the internet. So all these up and coming entrepreneurs, even people my age, they're getting distracted with so many things. Let me tell you, there's three type of people that I've noticed through me, my entrepreneurial journey. journey. There's the the gonna people. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. I call them the um, ambitious, lazy people. The ones that sit on the table with you and say they know everything, they know what to do, but they've done nothing. Okay, so they're the people, these people are going to come across these people and they're the ones that they have to, when you said blinkers, this is it. Have your blinkers on and don't be distracted by all these type of people. The second people are the rich people. And you're going to say, hang on, but I want to be rich. No, no, I'll tell you, the third one is what you want to be. Wealthy. The, the rich people, the rich people, all they do is talk about cars, vacations, watches, what are you wearing? That's, they're the conversations they're having, these rich people on the table. I've sat on these tables and the fucking balls the fuck out of me. It balls the fuck out of me because they're not motivating me. They're not inspiring me. There's a, yeah, I bought this car, bought that. Who cares? I don't care. For, at the end of the day, cars don't give me any money. They cost me money. So I'm not interested. Then you talk with wealthy people. The wealthy people talk about ideas, mate. They talk about networking. They talk about forecasting. What's new? What's hot? What's not? That's what wealthy people do. I'll give you a clear example of a wealthy person. I was sitting on my balcony at the peninsula and I'm looking out into the ocean, just relaxing, having a drink. And my son was out on the jet ski, my middle son. He's out on the jet ski having some fun. Anyway, he tips the jet ski. Okay, he tips the jet ski and he's sitting on the jet ski but, and he had his phone in, you know, those waterproof bags. Yeah. And he grabs his phone and he's sitting on the jet ski and he goes, rings me and goes, Dad, can you see me? I said, yeah, I can see what's up. He goes, I flipped it, and I can't get it over. It's a three-seater, it's a big jet ski, couldn't get it over. I'm thinking, oh, fuck, what am I going to do now? So anyway, as I get up, I see boats going by. One boat, two boat. No one's stopping for the kid. All right, 17, no one's stopping. This big 80-foot yacht, okay, goes by, does a massive U-turn, Frankie, massive U-turn, throws a rope, and pulls the jet ski back into the marina. These yachts do... 12 knots, 14 knots. It must have taken the guy 45 minutes just to get out of the marina, plus money on fuel for these things, okay? Spent the time, he was with his family, spent the time, did a big U-turn, comes back into the marina to drop off my son. As he comes back, he's, he comes to my pontoon, okay? I said, thanks so much, mate, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, we had a conversation and he said, what do you do? And I told him, I'm in the source business, you know, I'm manufacturing. I said, what do you do? He goes, I'm a builder developer. I said, okay. So we, we started having a conversation. We were talking. This is the difference. These are the conversations that we have with wealthy people than rich people. Not once we talk and spoke about his, his yacht. Not once we spoke about his yacht. I said to him, look, because you know, you need to take opportunities as they're there. I said, you're a builder, are you? Can I have your advice? He said, what's up? I said, look, I've got preliminary drawings. I'm building 27 apartments. Can I have your advice? He goes, where are they? And I told him. I had um, the plans on Dropbox on my phone. I showed him. And he goes to me, you're not doing apartments. His name's Dino. I said, Dino, what are you talking about, man? I said, I've spent money here. Nah, you're not doing apartments. 10% vacancy rates. Tenants come and go every eight months. They can paint their house 
your house pink if they want. They can have animals in there now. Get out of resi, he said to me. You're not going to do resi. I said, what do I do? He said, you're going to build a childcare centre. Childcare? I said, what the fuck do I know about childcare, man? I'm in the food game. I just, let me build these 27 apartments. And we're having a joke about it. He said, no, this is what you're going to do. He told me the return. He told me who to go to. He told me what I need to do. I'm building a childcare centre. My return is much more than the return of the apartments. My outlay is a third of the cost. Only because I spoke to one wealthy person that was willing to give me advice. It's the tables you, we sit with. You know, uh, sorry, the people we sit with on the tables that will actually help us. And he was the only guy out there on that day willing to help your son come in. And, even and he the was the only, loans. yeah. And he was the only, take the opportunity, like the Bataki truck, that, tr- that, that yacht, take the opportunity, speak to people. Our, like going back to what my parents said, don't speak to no one, keep quiet, do your thing. Hang on a second, Dad, if I do that, I, I don't network. I need to tell people that I've got this property and I want to do something with it. No, don't tell them you've got that property. What are you talking about? Are you mad? Don't tell people you've got properties. But if I don't speak, I don't learn. But that's, that's the mentality and that's the... You don't learn and you don't earn. Yeah. Because, I mean, as you... I mean, when you're a kid, you're running around the backyard, you've got Nutella on you, you're a free spirit, yeah? Then you start getting domesticated. By your parents, they're telling you how you need to be subconsciously. Subconsciously, subconsciously, that between the ages of zero and seven years old, you are very suggestible. Yeah, and your parents influence your whole entire life and your whole outlook on life. Mm. And I guarantee that any one of you listening to this and listening to what Peter's saying, if you go back and ask yourself, okay, why do I actually believe this belief that I've got? Why do I actually believe that? And you and you access some critical thinking, some objective thinking about where did this belief actually come from? When you can start to access that, you can start to unravel that a lot of the stuff that you believe that's holding you back in life is absolute fucking bullshit. It is. It's programmed by fear. And you don't blame your parents doing it. It's just because they want the best for you. They're scared. They don't want you to, you know, deviate away from society the way they want you to go to school, you know, finish it, get a degree, you know, get a house, and that's it. Don't do any more. Um, if you deviate from that, oh, be careful. Don't talk to people. Watch it. Don't tell people you've got money. Don't, hang on. People, the, you've got to tell the right people. You don't go put it on blast. Speak to the right people. They're the ones that are going to help you. And when you're sitting at a table, like I told you about rich people before, when you're sitting at start, if you're an entrepreneur fan like me, start probing people. You know what I mean? Spend the time. Probe people. Mm. Don't be in awe just because he's pulled up in a Lamborghini or Ferrari and go, oh, yeah, fan his ass. No, hold on a second. See who he is. See, you, you own a Lambo, but the interesting thing about your Lambo that I know, that the audience probably don't know at this moment, but I'm going to tell you, is like that you had about 20, 20 million in commercial mm. real estate mm. that, or, or, or maybe even industrial real estate that cash flowed as... And you use the cash flow from, oh, the, from the commercial, from the, from the industrial, to pay for the Lamborghini. Oh, absolutely. And people are doing it in reverse now. It yeah. makes me... Uh, it, it, you can get a Lamborghini, for, I think, for five grand a month. Yeah, man. Do, I, I, I'm watching that constantly. I'm watching it on socials, on the internet. These young kids, 28-year-olds, they're buying these cars, spending half a million dollars on cars. And then, if you know what? We had the discussion before, Frankie. There's so many people that are eager to post their cars, but no one's gone to their safe and pulled out a property title and said, hey, guess what? Have a look at this. Yeah. This is five million. That's paid off. Pull up yeah. the next one. Have a look at this property title. That's yeah. paid off. No one's doing that because oh, it's hard to gra- it's hard it, to get it's, properties. It's, You've got to work your fucking ass off. It's it's like you know I I I work I work my ass off to have a a really nice apartment in the UK paid off clear when I was thirty. Yeah, uh, you know it's it's uh, and I'm working my way to achieve. Mm. Uh, you know I've, I've I showed I told you what my ambitions are in the industrial and commercial and all that kind of yep. space and yep. what I want to do and. That's where I'm going and people like you that, that have already set foot in it and are 10, 10, 15 years ahead can show me the way to do it. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't go around buying all those Lambos. I don't um, have any animosity towards the people that do. Not at all. But it's just about you can tell the people that do it in the order that it's meant to be doing. And classic example, Oscar Ledlin, right? Oscar Ledlin has got enough free cash flow in the bank to buy his 
Um, he's Fra- always one of the Ferrari. He's We've had Fra- chats. Ferrari. He's got on his screensaver. Bro, he, he, he's, yeah, but here's the thing that people don't understand. He's got enough cash in his personal account to buy about six of them right now or more, right? To go in and buy them cash. He stops himself because he's like... I've got to just do this, this, and this first, Frankie. Because Cause, beca- cause he's watched people like you and other people, that's uh, right. the older generations, and he sees how you move. And you don't go rewarding yourself in that respect too fucking early because it takes away your ambition to go further. That's right. That's, uh, that is exactly right. That's what they're doing. If you can't... The, the objective here is, if they want to play... If they want to play the big game, the objective here is, can you maintain your lifestyle... If you shut your business off tomorrow, okay. If you, if I shut my manufacturing facility tomorrow, if I close the doors, can I constantly maintain with my? Can I maintain my lifestyle with my passive income? That's the objective. That's what you got to do because a lot of people rely on their business. Yeah, which is active. And that's not the, that's not cash flow. That's cash flow. For, they're mistaking it. Cash flow for your business is not cash flow for you to burn. Cash flow for business is for the business to be able to operate and function. You need cash flow in the business for a business to operate, function, pay its cogs, pay its outgoings, and operate. Cash flow, passive income cash flow, is for you to burn if you like to. It's okay, because guess what keeps coming? What about people like me, though, that are burning cash flow, that go and generate money in business, but then burn their cash flow on something that they're, that, that dry, like, this lights me up? So I burn cash on this at this moment. Yeah, but in time. this is another. Uh, well, but this is another journey for you. This is another. An invest. This could b- bring back dividends for you. You're not burning it on. We're talking about luxury items here. We're talking about mm. stuff. Cash flow should not be burnt on that. Yeah. Passive income. Your passive income should pay for your cars, pay for your holidays, pay for everything else. But people don't have the patience for it. So, you so, know what? Because sorry, Frankie, they don't have the patience for it because they don't want to start from the bottom. Okay, but they, what they don't realise is there's a lot of people pretending to be on the top. Okay, yeah. there's a lot of people pretending to be on the top. Start at the bottom, take your time. It's gonna it's gonna take a lot out of you, but you're gonna do it the right way. Buy your properties, buy your investments, create some cash flow. Don't be ninety percent LVR. Sit at fifty percent LVR, forty percent LVR. Going to value. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Play it safe. Play it safe. There's no reason to, to go wild and start buying all these luxury items because, I mean, social media has done that to the generations. They think it impulse, we want it, and we want it now. So if you were going to give, from what you've done, your pearl of wisdom then on how people can go and make their first $100,000 of passive, mm. what, what would you implement into their lives to allow that to happen? I would stop complaining and I'll start restraining. What I would do is I'll say, look, I don't go out as often. They do. Well, bad luck. Stop complaining. Oh, I need to save this amount of money a month, but they don't because they get to go out and travel. Bad luck. Stop complaining. Start restraining. Start disciplining yourself. It's a, we had the discussion about a boxer. Yeah, It is the same thing as a boxer. If a boxer disciplines himself okay, and stays true to the craft, he will succeed. I don't know anybody that has disciplined themselves and been thorough that hasn't succeeded. I don't know anybody. I went to number five in Australia today in Apple and Spotify. And people, people, thank you, bro. People think that I would be celebrating today. Mm-hmm. And I, as much as I, I love that, I, I fell in love with the reps of doing it. So mm. I'm here doing a podcast because mm. I'm passionate about this. Mm. I have these conversations and this is what gives me the juice. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. The rest of what happens on the back end, I've disconnected myself with that because my ego is not attached to that. People think it might be. It's not. I couldn't give a fuck. Up, down, sideways. I know where it's going anyway. I just let that compound. I just enjoy this moment. If you fall in love with doing the reps, if you fall in love with turning up and just doing the activity mm. the everything else comes on the back end of the activity that's you right. have to do the fucking activity right you have to do it 
it's, it, and I think so many people miss that fact. They're, they fall in, even if you're not physically in love with it as much as I love podcasting, but if you know you've got to do something to get an outcome, you have to fall in love with it. You have yeah. to fall in love with it. Even if it's not your, your end, your ultimate, your, it's not the thing that you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. Yeah, but in that moment, if you've got to do fucking 100 calls a day to get five sales, fucking fall in love with the art of making 100 fucking phone calls, and then... then that builds you a little bit of cash flow. Now you can take that and you could turn that from active, which is your earned income, and now you can take that and you can buy your first commercial. You can buy, That's your, what first, you're gonna do. You buy your first residential. Yes. Put a tenant in it. Now go and do it again. But, but, but in order to do that, you have to fucking, as much as it sounds fucking ironic, you have to fall in love with the activity of doing the thing that gets you the money that allows you to put it passive. Yeah. You can't listen to a podcast with Peter here talking about... 20 million of property this that kicks him off passive cash flow that allows him to buy his Lamborghini and not understand that Peter didn't start there he started fucking from a immigrant family that, that where his mum and dad were psychologically teaching him lack let's be honest yeah that's they were, right they were not through their own fault mm, they were mm. teaching you lack yeah I came from a family that were middle class too mm. and and unbeknownst to them because my mum always used to say be safe Frankie be safe be safe be safe be safe if I fucking stayed in that environment guess what I'd be fucking safe but mm. safe doesn't fucking light you up does it safe, that's does, right. safe doesn't free you yeah that's so, right so in terms of them getting their first thousand dollars like we were saying you, you're saying what work a sales job stack some cash what are you saying what, what should they be doing it does not matter where you're working at the end of the day you need to have money management. If you can't manage your own personal home money, how are you going to manage a business? How are you going to manage property income coming in? Start from the core. Start managing home money. Did you have poor money management and that's what, at the start? I had, I had yeah, in my it, early 20s. Poor I money was, management. Yeah, I was. I was. I was very naive. I thought that it, could just, it just comes as quick as it goes and I did it. Part of that combination. That one by one combination, you know, you need to go through these things to learn. And what I've noticed, and especially being on socials for the last six years, and I pay attention, like I told you, I love the craft, I love the entrepreneurial craft, I'm a fan. And what I've noticed is a lot of people complicate things. They complicate things. For example, they say, you don't have a business plan, you plan to fail. Well, what did your business plan tell you about the pandemic? Who the fuck are you? On, you know, Nostradamus? Are you going to predict the future? You don't need a business plan. Then they say to you, oh, keep your job, um, go get a side hustle. Well, that's just like having a wife and having a fucking mistress. Where do you need to pay attention? To your wife or the mistress? The, the, you know, the, it, it, all these things yeah. that they keep saying, it does not make sense to me. Side hustle, business plan. The, 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 do you know what? Business coaches are the biggest, a biggest scam going. The, mate, they see that they they feed off broken people, people that are hungry and thirsty and don't know which direction to take. They feed off broken there's, people. There's a couple of girls that I know that may or may not listen to this podcast, and I hope they fucking do. They're in Sydney right now. Yeah, girls, I'm talking to you if you're listening. I've seen on Instagram that you're looking for a business coach. I'm telling you now, you don't fucking need one, yeah. right? Because because everything's on the oh, because, everything's because, on the internet. Because, what do you need a business coach? You, fucking Google you, it. You'd learn more listening to this podcast or fucking or listening to some some youtube video or do you know what i mean like fuck business coaching right i understand okay so projection in terms of a business panel at the start i think is bullshit too projection comes into being decent in a business once you've got runs on the board to allow yourself to project off real life numbers right so i take uh, so i would where i'd you where i would use projection in a business let's just look at high smiles of business if they had just fucking written a business plan and projected from day one they're projecting what i call fucking thin air they've got no idea from a, from a, from from anyone what that what that business is going to turn over after a year's worth of figures you can make a projection You've got real life numbers in front of you. They're the businesses that should be making projections, right? Different level, but but different but, but level. There are different. There you are, have something yeah. to work with. You you can't make a projection. You're just ter- you're just talking absolute bollocks. Is it's all bullshit. And I see it all the time. Like every, one page business plan, seven page business plan. Get a loan off the bank. No it means nothing. No decent business. No decent business that I've known of from all the entrepreneurs. They never started with a bank loan. No. They might have started with a credit card debt or put ten grand on a credit card, this that and the other, or this that and the other. But not, not, no, they've not gone to business. They've not gone to. A fucking well, you'd be bank. crazy. You'd but be they're... crazy to do it. But let me tell you something. Even Plan B. Oh, you need a Plan B. I mean, my accountant would 
until he realised how, how I am and he, he pulled back. Plan B, so what? Oh, you want a safety net? In, anybody that's got a plan B fails because they always know they can go to plan B. I was, even with George Cambosis, okay, we're having the discussion with George Cambosis and George Cambosis said it clearly online. He said, I didn't go that hard on my first fight with Haney because I had the rematch. And what's the rematch? A plan B. Yeah. That's a plan B. And You don't yeah. need a plan B. Go in always with plan A. There's no plan B. Okay? Yeah. This is going to work. That's what you have to say to yourself, Frankie. This is going to work. There's no, I'm not going anywhere else. I, I, I remember. And make what, it fucking work. I remember when uh, I first set this up and after a few months I contacted you and you, you know how much conviction I've always had about this mm. from day one, mm. you know? And I, I fucking live it and I breathe it and I take activity on it and I just keep fucking grinding at it. And I know it's going to work. And in my head, I've already seen the future and, and my future. And why did I tell you I came on? Because you fucking got 110 episodes? 109 as of today. 109 yeah. episodes. So I said, this guy's not wasting time. He's not a fluffer. I know because you get, when I'm, you yeah. spoke to me, how yeah. long ago? Eight, nine months ago? No, nah, longer. Longer? 16. Yeah. And you said, I want you on a party. What were you, two up? I was I was probably about thirty and probably yeah whatever it was I said I yeah no worries ten. another guy that wants a podcast yeah no I got no time no 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 I want to I want to talk to people that are serious then you I'm talking to you now at 109 why because Frankie's serious yeah. I want to I spend my and time with built, serious I, I, people and we've built our relationship since then as well but I want to spend my time with serious people yeah, yeah. I don't want to waste my time my time's precious man well, you it, know it, it, it's it's when you when you it's it's also a feeling I think you get you mm. feel. You, f- you have a feeling about people, don't you? In terms of like if they genuinely love what they do and if they're genuinely interested. You gauge that. You what ga- I tell you before, you start got- probing the tables that you sit with. Gauge yeah. people, see, what, see if they're really into it or not. You know, um, I'll tell you a story that, and it's always about opportunity. People gotta, need to understand that there's opportunities everywhere, okay? It's a matter of you turning the opportunity you're, into a dream. You're never, that you're never, at, la- at lack of opportunity, the world never. The, wo- the world is abundant with opportunity, and even if you've even if you're sat there today with eight dollars in your bank account, there is someone in your phone book, on your fucking Apple phone that you've probably got, right? Where the, the, in your hundred contacts that you've probably got, there's someone that needs you where you could sell something for or there, mm. there's some way that you could make a value exchange where you could you could get some money and someone could get some sales or some something could happen so like opportunity is not what you want to look for mm. because they're, they're everywhere it's about having a clear a clear vision to the opportunity that's right for you as a human being yes but at the same time when i say they're everywhere they are everywhere in terms of what you're focusing on so as you're focusing for that opportunity, it's right in front of you. That Pataki truck would have meant nothing to you, Frankie. Yeah. It just drove straight past it. But that, to me, was, was the opportunity because I'm probing and I'm looking for an opportunity. I tell this story to my son all the time. There were two guys that were walking along the bank of a river. One guy falls in. He doesn't know how to swim. Goes in the middle and he's screaming, help, help. A little fishing boat goes by, yeah? And his mate's on the bank and he goes... Jump on the boat. Jump on the boat. He goes, no, no, I'm waiting for God. I'm waiting for God. Jump on the boat. You're going to drown. I'm waiting for God. The boat goes by. Then a log. The boat was God. <laughs> the boat, the log goes by. Okay? A log, a log comes by. Jump on the log. I'm waiting for God. Mate, you are going to drown. The log goes by. His mate's frustrated on the side of the river. He grabs a branch, barely reaches him. Grab this branch. You're going to, dr- you're going to drown. The guy ends up drowning. Says he's waiting for God. Goes upstairs. Goes, God, why don't you help me? I was praying for you. Goes, I sent you the boat. I sent you the log. And I sent you the branch. How many more opportunities do you want me to give you? Opportunities. That's what I tell my oldest son. He's 20 years old. Opportunities are there. Look out for them. They're there for you. They're there for you. For what you're looking for, they're there. Start probing. And that's what... That Pataki truck was that log, that boat. Because, like I said to you, that would have meant nothing to you. Just drive by. Someone else, it would have been a parking spot that they took up. I said, fuck, this guy's this truck's taken up his parking spot. But for me, it was that light bulb moment. It was like, bang. You know, this is yeah. what I need. It changed my life. Just that truck changed my life. So every time I walk into places now, since that time, I look for opportunities that will suit me. Opportunities everywhere, but opportunities that will suit me. 
things yeah. that will work with me. Sit on the right tables, have the conversations. If there's other, there's other people, there's people on tables that their headspace is another stratosphere, mate. Guess what? You're not that. You're not their connection. They'll find their connection, but that's not for you. It's, you know? your, it's your job, as far as I'm concerned, to raise your energy and raise your consciousness as a human being to the point where you where you start to attract these opportunities into your life. Spot on. So well you yeah. ra- rather than rather than being out in the world being a victim, rather than being out in the world not adding value, if you start adding value and showing up to the world, you know how can I help these people? Like we were talking about it before the podcast mm. about a couple of connections that are made for people off the, off off air. Yeah, right? that's right. And it's like so you do similar things. It's like you know that comes back down the down the track. Bro. It's like it's like there's no there doesn't need to be monetary value in it. Just if you just start helping others, the world will start helping you. If you just start serving the world at a greater level, the world will start serving you. Mm. It's 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 no coincidence that as I serve more of you with this content. Because you hear that I love it in my voice and because you know it comes from the right place, you start to resonate with more than other mm. podcasts. So you start listening to more. You start sharing it with your friends yep. that because, because you feel it, right? Mm. And it, that I, because hopefully I'm adding value to you, you will add value to me by sharing the content, by, by putting it in other people's ears. How do you think that goes? How do you think? But you have to start by adding the value, yeah? You, I can't, you can't expect someone to go and... Sh- share your love unless you l- sh- share your love yourself yeah, that's right there's so many people that keep everything uh, uh, boxed in that close the door to themselves open the fucking door open the door speak to people speak to the right people you you know who the right people are you just avoid them some people avoid them whether it's an ego that I want to ask the questions I have no problem asking anybody questions and if they think they're smarter than me good luck to them at the end of the day, if I can learn something, I'm 45 and I'll still c- continue to ask questions. I've got no problem with asking questions because I'm learning. It's going to benefit me. But people, there's, there's this ego. You know, I'm not going to ask him or I'm not going to tell him how to do it. You don't get anywhere like that. It's exactly what you just yeah, said. Yeah. You know, serve. Ser- serve the world and the world will serve you. I think That's that, right. I have... Um, trying to think of the quote oh yeah th- th- i have a quote written on my window of my apartment when i open the curtains in the morning it says uh, all of life comes to me with ease joy and glory and i read it to myself every morning That's all, right. all of life comes to me with ease joy and glory because how you start your day is how your day goes on mm. you know and i start my day from a grateful place i'm grateful for australia like why do you think i do the reps as much as i do in australia mm. with this because i owe a debt of gratitude because Australia changed my life and mm. I'm trying to pay that back. Mm. You understand? Yeah, yeah like, sure. It means a lot to me to be here. It means a lot to me to be a citizen of this country. Yes. Right? So I'll travel around the world to get good content and hopefully I'm sending it on the different stratosphere for this country, representing the UK, representing Australia at a world level. I want to do that because there's some meaning to it because I've seen it. Do you know what I'm saying? And that all comes from feeling. And I just think that a, a, a lot of you that listen to this have so so much abundance of opportunity and, and vision in your mind you just may have to today look at your company structure it a little different that's right take it you may you might have a company in one niche you might have to, you might have an agency that markets people you might be marketing the wrong people you might have to go from marketing restaurants where it's harder to get people on the seats to marketing e-com brands where where you can make a lot more margin you can charge for the charge more for deliveries you might have to go from making carpentry products in this niche to making them in this niche because there's more margin in it. What Pete has said there about identifying what 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 current vehicle you're in, you might not be in the wrong industry, you might be in the wrong vehicle within that industry is what I'm trying to say. And stop looking for an easy fix. A lot of them want to fast track this thing. They want to fast track it. Yes, there are what you said before, high smile or what was that other... Davy Fogarty. The no, Udi. the, the, the Udi. Udi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there are scenarios where these guys were dropshippers and all of a sudden they built big brands. Yeah. But that's not the norm. That doesn't happen every day. And people, a lot of people are constantly saying, I want a quick fix. You want my, which camera are we looking at? You want my advice? Pick a business that's difficult because guess what? Minimal competition. Okay? Oh. That's the way I see it. A business that's difficult, a business that is hard to produce and make, is going to be have lim- limited competition because not everybody wants to do it. No one wants to work hard. Yeah. Me, I'm top five in Australia. Why? 
Because no one's going to get up in the morning and go, you know what, I'm going to buy a tank today and start mixing sources. Too hard. Oh, you know, I'm going to put three, four million in infrastructure. Too hard. I might just start doing a bit of drop shipping. Just, just talk me into the infrastructure that you have now. Because obviously you started off with just that, that little one warehouse that produced, produced, you know, where you was mixing up the mm, source mm, yourself. Mm. What infrastructure have you... Because obviously you've constantly reinvested. How much infrastructure do you have now as a business? Oh, we've, we operate at two facilities. So I've got, I've got uh, production, which is running out of 1,200 square metres. There's infrastructure in there worth about 11 million. Okay, then I've got a warehouse which we warehouse all the stuff. We're running out of two facilities and we're trying to merge it now as we speak. And I'm guessing, because you're a Greek man, I'm yes, guessing I own you, uh, you yes, own I own them. them. Yes, I own them. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't, you don't run on any debts, any loans or anything like that, do you? Of course. No, 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 of course. So how did, so no, how the did, only way you're going to grow is if you're in debt. Right. There's no way I'll have everything. So break, uh, down, yeah. so break down the difference in the debts that you have compared to the debts that most people have. Well, the only way, the debts that I'll always occur is I'll always stay at about 40, 50% LVR. So whatever I, if I raise my LVR, I'll take it easy. I'll start paying more stuff off. As soon as I get to 40, 50%, I'll buy another property. I'm always right. playing safe, 50%, right, right, 40% right, right, LVR, right. you know, because look at it, look what's happening and now. That, and that allows you access to better rates on the money that you take because, because, you, because you're not as well, much look, of a risk, well, right? Look, look what's happening now. I mean, we went from 2.5%, we reached 55 Imagine being 70 80% LVR now, you know? Right. This is where the correction is going to happen. People are saying, oh, no, we're going to come out of this unscathed. Impossible. So How is that? There's so much money that went out last year, the last two years, and everybody thinks that, oh, no, we're going to be cool. So we're good. Uh, so, uh, so, so let's just break it down so it's real easy, because I really want people to understand what you're saying here. Mm. So, you've, so on your 11 million commercial facility, right, you, you're saying that you'd keep that paid down to five and a half million owing on that. And move on to the next right. one. So yeah. when you get it to five and a half million, you reloan against the asset. And moving up, move on. Right, okay. But when you reloan against the asset, how much money are you pulling out of that building? So you've paid off five and a half million of the But even if you own, sorry, Frankie, even if you own the buildings, yeah. those buildings still pay rent to your family trusts. Right. Okay. So those that, 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 those that, those buildings yeah. are producing rentals. You're not you're not operating these buildings for free, even though you own them. Right. You do not operate in your buildings for free. Your building, no business, operates for free. So what you have to do is work out your business side of things. Then you have your family. Your, your, I've got a family it. trust. You have another entity. I love this. Th- that actually operates as a separate entity and couldn't care less if eight food makes money or not. It says, hang on a second. You're in my facility. You owe me money every week, so even though I own them both. So let me get this straight then, because I, I, I really want to break this down so that, mm. so that they can s- clearly see what you're saying there. Because I get it, but I really want to simplify mm. even mm. even further from that. So you're saying you have the, the, the trust, you might have a holding company, this, this. Mm. This holding company owns this asset. Your company rents this asset that's right. off this holding company that's and right. pays them a rent for it. That's, so that's right. cash flow to the holding company. Yeah. That cash flow, what does it do? That's, That's passive. passive income. That's passive. That buys my cars. That gives me my vacations. That gives me everything. Now, if eight food, right, argument's sake, can't pay the rent, well, guess what? It's in trouble because this entity needs its rent. So, so you know so, what so I mean? Now even got, now even got, though I own them both, it yeah, does not matter. Yeah, yeah. You can't rob Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to treat them as two different entities, and that's the problem. What other, a lot of owners of properties they say, oh, I own the building and I pay myself rent. I own the building. No, no, no. Treat it as if. It's independent. Everything needs to be a business and needs to cash flow accordingly yes. because any other business would have rent. So why wouldn't your business have rent even if you own the facility is what you're saying. Yeah. But I just want to go back to that point. I even, sorry to interrupt you, but I even rent the Lamborghini off my company. 100% you do because you wouldn't buy it personally, would you? Yeah. So I own, I, I even though the, the Lamborghini is mine, I still rent the Lamborghini off my company as a director. So, and I say, hang on, uh, the company... We'll rent the Lamborghini. It's allowed to rent a Lamborghini. And if you put eight food on the side of the Lamborghini, would you be able to? Would you be able to uh, run in, run any of that as a marketing budget? Well, I wouldn't need to because I run it. Un- I run. Well, I'd look into that, but I wouldn't even. Yeah, you possibly can. I've seen actually an activewear company in Melbourne do, do that. Yeah, cartel. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen Nick, that. Yeah, you yeah, possibly Nick, can. Yeah. but I don't do it that way. Um, but there's a lot of ways that you can do. This is the fun. Yeah, I know. This is the fun. You know, this is the stuff that everybody should be looking at and and learning the game and, 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 and um, how can I say, 
perfecting the craft of being an entrepreneur fan. But, but I really want the, the the key thing I want to mm. get down into right. Mm. This facility, mm. eleven million, and I keep going on to this. That's in, re- that's in, uh, that's just in equipment. Yeah, eleven I, I, million. That's right. not the building. Yeah, let's just, that's let's, not the building. But anyway, let, let's just yeah. say, let's just let's just say the building was worth yeah, eleven yeah, million. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, let's, let's make it. Let's put a number. Let, put ten. Let's put ten. Right. So yeah. say the say you have a building worth ten million. Yeah. Just so just so they fully understand what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. I really want to break this down clear as day, so yeah. everyone it lands with everyone. Yeah. Right. For anyone sitting at the back, I want this to land with you. When the building's worth ten and you've paid it down. To, so that you've got five million paid off, so now you owe five. How much money, Peter, are you pulling out of the building at that point to go and buy the next one? Well, you're you're only owe five, and it's worth ten. Yeah. So how much? So you, fu- how you, much? How much you put? Just enough. Just enough to buy the next one. So you. So, you, so what you do is you go buy your next building, no matter whatever the price would be on the next building. Yeah. You pull out just enough. Just thirty percent. So you pull out thirty percent. Yep. Buy the next one because yep. in the industrial you need thirty percent. So then that might take you then to seventy. Yeah, right. It'll okay. Take it exactly. Yeah. So so what I'm saying is you, you wouldn't take you, the car. No, no, the, it won't take you. Yes. You, no, the, the, no, no. The, but hold on, it will take you to seventy. But you've acquired another property as well. No, I understand that. Yes. No, I understand that. Yes. What I'm saying, what I'm trying to ascertain to the audience is, mm. you've paid down five, but you'd only pull out up to two. You wouldn't pull out three or four because then that would take your loan to value too down, Thank too you. down low. And even though, yes, you'd acquired another property, you'd be too far exposed to the market is what I'm trying, right. is trying, I'm trying yeah. to drop on them. Yes. Yeah. No, I just, right. I just wanted them to understand yes. that because, because otherwise you can there's, – there's so many nuances there that you could unpick that, that and, take them down the wrong path. And you can do it at a much smaller level. At a three four hundred thousand dollar house yep. out in Lara, yep. out in you know wherever, yep. and you play that game, the same game, yep. you know, the um, leverage game, the yeah, leverage. the leverage game, and, what, I, and I, be patient, and yeah. be patient. People aren't being patient enough. They just you know, once I remortgage my asset and pull out, I could pull out probably seventy percent or more out of the UK. Um, I c- I've got the positioning with everything else I've stacked as well, and other investments I've made to start really leveraging up to in the commercial space, but only because. I did the hard yards mm. in the early days and rather than going out and, and getting on the cocaine and smashing 17 beers and all the other crap that a lot of young people are doing that they believe takes them somewhere where it doesn't take them, that's why, that's why that happened, right? Because they're not drinking, because they're not smoking, because they're not doing drugs. I just took all the money. Every, every, people don't realise this. Every time you lot were going out drinking at the pub, Doing t- doing what I, back in the day like 150 pound. I would I would think how much would I spend on this night 150 pound? Okay, cool. And I'd stack that cash. I was doing right? the same. And you were doing it right. I was doing the same. And it's like that that mentality has served me. And I'm teaching my boys the same thing. I'm a 20 year old. I've got an 18 year old. They contribute to the family trust every month. And they're only it's 20 and 18. Why? Not because I I need it to. I need them to. How much do you make it contribute like percentage wise? No, they contribute 1500 dollars each a month. They're only kids, yeah? $1,500 each a month to the family trust. That is a rule of thumb. You know what I mean? And my relatives are like, wow, get your kids to do that? Yeah, because I'm teaching them discipline at a young age. I'm right. teaching them that you need to, if you need to acquire something, you need to sacrifice. So, so yeah. even, though, even though, you know, they see mum and dad working hard in business, you're not going to have an easy run. You need to contribute to the growth of the family. You know what I mean? And that's the thing that everybody should be doing. It's not one, it's us, it's all of us as a family unit. Yeah. How can we grow? You know, the conversation is not limited between mum and dad anymore. And that's what my mum and dad used to do. Don't tell the kids, the kids don't need to know. When I have conversation on the table, it's my 18 year old son, it's my 20 year old, it's my 13 year old boy too. And we're talking about business. Because yeah. I want to. No edu- phones, no phones. No, no phones. I want to educate them. I want to tell them this is what you need to do to succeed. I want to give them a massive head start, but not an easy run. Not an easy run. 1,500 you, 1,500 you a month. You're going to contribute to the family trust. So, Why, Dad? Because I need to see some discipline. I want to so, see so you guys how, be disciplined. How are they generating the cash to contribute 1,500? They work with me. Right, so they work in the business. They work with me. My so, son. So, so, my, they're, so, so, so they're getting paid to learn the trade. Well. Because to, to, they, because they're going to get the, tr- they're going to have to take over the business yeah. potentially anyway. So Mikey, my oldest, he dropped out at sixteen. He came to me at sixteen. He said, "Dad, I don't want to do school anymore. It bores me." And I said, "What are you going to do?" He goes, "I'm coming with you." I said, "Mate, I'm a prick at work, man." I said, "I'm a prick at work. I'm not like Dad at home, a jokester. I'm a prick at work." 
He goes, I know, Dad, I know. It's food, and you take food seriously. Because we put food in people's mouths, man. I don't sell spare parts. Like, my, I'm FSC accredited. I've got QA. I've got procurement. I've got, like, we don't muck around at my work, you know, at, within my facility. And I said to my boys, I'm very strict at work. And Mikey goes, what time do I start? I said, 5 a.m. He's 20. Four years, hasn't missed a day. Hasn't missed a day. Four years, Okay. I'm trying to teach him to be, I said to him, you don't have to be a 30-year-old CEO. You can be a 25-year-old CEO. Here's yeah. your opportunity. Here's your opportunity, you know, and um, he doesn't take anything for granted. The second one saw him, guess what? Does the same thing. It's how we program our kids. Yeah. It's yeah. how we program a kid. Have the conversations with them. So, so uh, your kids, they're what, earning what, five, six, seven grand a month? Yeah. Right? Yeah, and then, five and a half, yeah. And then, and then, they, and then they have to... They have to contribute. Contribute. I, uh, direct debit, mate. I yeah. don't wait for it. So you... So I don't wait for it. Right. Direct debit every month, 1500 each. Yeah. I've got a and friend of mine... Uh, is, there, is there a point in... T- I know they're going to get it back in terms of inheritance down the track and all that stuff, but is there a point in time when they get access to this capital yes. to go and use it? Yes, What is the... So how have you structured that so they get access to the capital to go and execute on Good that? move. Well, the thing is what I've said to them as we grow... As we grow, as we grow, you're going to get married. You're going to move out, yeah? That's going to be paid for by your contribution. You're going to want a house, yeah? Yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out as much as you want from a family trust. What house do you want? Okay? Go deposit, deposit the house. Borrow the rest and move, keep moving on, you know? And then he can actually make decisions on what the family trust buys and what it doesn't. We become a, a board of directors. Yep. We're all on the same table. And we talk about growth, wealth mindset. Yeah. Let's all have that conversation. But you can't be a family where the dad and the mum takes control of everything and, how can I say, exclude the kids. Because the kids then feel as though, A, they haven't earned it. They can't be part of the conversation. They feel as though they've been entitled, they've been given everything. That's, that self-esteem isn't strong because yep. they've lost it, because they don't have it. But once they feel as though they've contributed to it, they've had discussions about it, they know what, where we're heading, they feel like they're part of it. Yeah. And they go, you know what? I- and they want to. Com- they, they they would only want to contribute to something they feel a part of. If you if if you make your son or your daughter feel like they're on the journey, how would they not want to contribute? Because they feel part of something. That's right? what I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. And, and I I fully get the psychology. Have you heard of that before? No. Well, I I, I have, have. you heard I, of that? I've had from a lot of richer families. Yeah. But a, but I talk now to a lot of wealthy people, and mm. a lot of uh, wealthy people move like that. But a lot of people don't understand the psychology of it. It's the but that's right. It's not the fifteen hundred each. Mate, it's not about that. It's, it's a not, couple of lunches. Uh, yeah, it's not the fifteen yeah, hundred yeah, each. Yeah. It's the psychology behind it. I I fully you under, get it. I fully understand, yeah. and I want the audience to understand. The money is the inconsequential thing here. That it, it's it's the it's the discipline. It's the lesson. It's the psychology, and it's like what what Peter's trying to tell you here on this podcast is he's trying to t- tell you that discipline equals results and without discipline without a little bit of pain in terms of like yeah you might want to go down xyz pavilion and 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 drink and do drugs and all this stuff but that bag of cocaine disempowers your future that's like, right because because that 200 dollars or that 600 pound or that 60 pound in england or whatever you spend on that kind of narcotic is like gonna that that is that is 60 pound that you're robbing your own future family that you you're robbing your legacy of of money f- for what to get away from yourself when you should be working on yourself that's what you're doing you get away from you're using you're using substances in a lot of cases alcohol uh pornography uh, and other other substances drugs to get away from yourself so that you can't because you, you don't want to accept reality because but when you but when you take that raw hard look at yourself and i've had to fucking do this i've had to fucking do you've this. done a deep dive i've done i've gone fucking deep i've been emotional wreck on the floor i've done breath work i've i've had i've i've had to have a fucking long hard look at myself to i've be, done that too bro and and and, and you, that's what gets you to that position when you fear, when you fucking get there when you fucking like this is who frankie lee is this is who you you are guys this is who i fucking am this is how i'm going to turn up and this is how i'm going to be and if you respect yourself enough to know that that man or that woman that looking in the mirror right now and you respect yourself enough to know who the fuck you are guess what 
all this other fucking bullshit that you're doing, the casual hookups, the fucking drugs, the drink, it all fucks off. You don't need to do that anymore because you don't need to escape your life because you're living it. Mm. And that's very fucking important that you get that point. It's very important. Because the one thing that I see that's a commonality between successful men, successful men especially, is the fact of like, you have been with your wife now for how long? Wow. Uh... For like 25 years? We've been together since we were... I'm 45. It's uh, Kathy, right? Yeah, Kathy. I'm 45. She's 43. We've been together since we were 17. Right, so... 17, yeah. How big a part of your life has Kathy? She's a beast. Been? She's yeah. a beast. Like, she's the type... Like, I've exaggerated now, but if I killed someone, she'll say to me, where's the shovel? Yeah, 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 she's yeah, yeah. my ride or die. Guys, quick one for you. If you're getting value from this content and you're loving what's being put down so far, drop a like on this video, drop a comment on it, and share it across social media for me. Man, I'm telling you, without uh, without my wife, there's no way I'd be where I am. And, and if I am, where I, it'll take me an extra five, six years to get to where I am. She's fast-tracked my life for sure. You know what I mean? And she's helped. She's allowed me to discipline the boys the way I want to. Because she knows I know best and she knows that's the way I want to program my kids. Because a lot's happened the last two and a half years. And the kids can get programmed in so many different ways, you know. Um, and she's allowed me to have these really, really deep conversations with the boys about who they are, masculinity, how they should control themselves and conduct themselves out there. You know what I mean? Because they can easily turn. Yeah. They can easily turn. You know, drugs as well. Society, society as a whole is trying to demascul- demasculinize yeah. men. Yeah. And, and they're trying to teach women that, that empowerment comes from them being more masculine mm. be by, by being more dominant. And mm. it's not really the, the, it's not really, when you strip it back, it's not really, it's not really your truth as a woman in a lot of cases. And it's not really the truth of society. When you look at how society has been brought up for years and years and years, that's not to say that you can't be an empowered woman and smash it in business. That's not what I'm saying, Mm. but you, but, but don't lose your femininity doing it. Don't don't, try, don't try, don't try and have a dick when you don't actually physically have one, because that's where, that's where you become disconnected in a lot, in a lot of ways. It's like, just like, you know, men should explore their emotional side, but still, still have the fortitude to know that they are a man yeah do you see what I'm saying there are a lot of beautiful women in the UK Australia mm. in the world but like in Australia where I live there's a lot of beautiful women a lot of beautiful women like you can, you can there's beautiful women everywhere you look <laughs> like it's unfucking believable there's a lot of young men out there that that, that, that that can't that can't make a clarity of decision on the woman that they want to lock in yeah how would you advise a man to do that test them test them test, test them. those women yeah test them on what Test them. Put them through the ringer. See if they if they are willing to do. Like for example, <laughs> there's a lot of beautiful women, yeah, but some of them come with a lot of baggage, and a lot of head fuck, you know. So, what I would do, what I'll tell my boys, is test them. See what how far you can go. Drive a Hyundai i thirty for six uh, two years. Don't yeah. drive a fucking Porsche. I just want. Don't wanna, drive a BMW. I, 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 drive a shit yeah. car. Don't take it to classy restaurants. Don't take a don't you know don't go buy these expensive I just want, bags. I just want to like, clarify what you're saying by test as well. You're saying by Peter's saying test a, test a woman by the fact of like not driving the fancy shit. Not yeah being the oh yeah way. of course that's what I mean testing yeah. yeah test you need to see you need to see what this what her purpose is and the way her outlook in life is she a ride or die chick is she a, a chick that will do anything whatever it takes to succeed. As a unit, or she's just going to sit there and be Mrs. Pretty and expect fucking you just to come home and throw a lot of cash on the table and say, okay, here's your spending money for the week. And what do you want? What do you want in life? Because if you want that, that runs out. And what should a woman be looking for in a man? Stability, confidence, someone that can provide. You know, there's a lot of show ponies out there. Yeah. There's a lot of fluff. You know? Yeah, we were talking about Ta- Yeah. We were talking about this before the podcast. Yeah, a lot of fluff. Like I told you, mm. my son shows me um, on social media, he goes, Dad, look at him, he owns a nightclub. I have a look, I said, who's that? Shows me, owns, I said, hang on a second. He owns a nightclub. So he's a promoter, okay? Makes money at the door, doesn't even make money on, at the tap, which is liquor, okay? The owner of the nightclub makes money on the liquor. This guy just makes money on the door and he's calling himself a nightclub owner. All fluff. But the 20-year-olds are buying it. Oh, he owns a nightclub. Fuck no, you own a nightclub. You know what it costs to own a nightclub? 
you know, and, and, and the, the, because they're not looking deep, as, much, as deep as I'm looking, they don't get it. It's just that superficial facade, you know? Um, so that's what I would say. I would say test them in terms of what they want in life with you. Like, if you give them everything from the start, they'll expect more and think that's the life. They'll fall in love with that type of lifestyle. Right. And I think that's what you, uh, you know, and you try and change later. And, uh, and, what, and what, do you say, what do you say to the women that at the moment might have fell in love with that lifestyle themselves and uh, find themselves in that, in that journey where they're involved with these men that are potentially these show pony men and they're involved in this lifestyle right now? What would you say to those women? How do they? How do they? How do they? How do they change? The, the, it's because hard because women are emotional creatures, right? You know what I mean. So these women now are in love. Women are emotional creatures. Men can disconnect. Women are different. So, and that's why I say, like, you know, um, it's very difficult. It's very difficult for the younger generation to come out because there's so much things going on, on the internet, and they expect so much, but it's all like a, a false illusion. It's all just a false illusion. It's all, when you dig deep, you realise these guys are on like 60 grand a year, 70 grand a year. They can't maintain those type of lifestyles. They're kids. They're in their yeah. early 20s. You know, um, yeah, that's what I'll do. I wouldn't. Nah. <laughs> I, I, I would, yeah, like I said to you, Frankie, I would, probe, I would probe them and I'll just take my time. My boys, I said to them, you know, you don't show f- your full cards from yeah, the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I think that's what a lot of um men do and it's only as you get older you, you start Cuz I want to impress. It. You try you're trying to impress rather than express yourself. Yeah. And it's all about exp- if you if you allow yourself to express more and impress less, it talks for you. How beautiful would it be if a woman fell in love with who you are? Who are, who you actually she are. are. How beautiful would that be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cuz that's what I've got at the moment. Yeah. That's my, that, that, my wife's seen me have it, ha- seen lost it yeah. and seen come back up. Yeah. Still growing, yeah. You know, I have my head. You know, how beautiful is, is it if you have that type of relationship with someone rather than, yeah. you know, expecting and living in this fantasy world. Well, when I see people like you and the way that you, you both have roles. You and Kathy have roles in mm. the relationship, and you both know the roles, and and that's why it works because there's no ego with that. You're no, not, try- not at you're all. Not, you're not trying to step into her role and she's not trying to step into yours. You both know what you're good at and you both live in those spaces mm. and then you come together and you create abundance in the middle of it. Mm. And it's like, that's that's the key to success in, in from what I can see from the outside looking in. Well, Bouncy, oh. what time did I message you this morning? 4 a.m. <laughs> so I was up at 3.30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm up every morning early Today, specifically, I was up because I couldn't get through these invoices. There's shitloads of invoices, and I can't work it out, and I was trying to work it out. I got a, There's two Cathy's and a VJ in my office, so there's three ad- admins. And I passed it on to the other Cathy. She couldn't work it out. Then I said to my wife this morning, Najda, at 5 a.m., I said, you've got to work this shit out, man. I can't work it out. I, it, and like you said, bounce off each other. There's no ego for me to say, I'm gonna, oh, oh, she may work it out. And what, am I going to look stupid? I couldn't work it out. It's just, it was a schmozzle, you know, and, and I couldn't work it out. I've passed it on to Kathy. I reckon when I get back there today, she would have worked it out. We need yeah, to, yeah, yeah. We have, even in our business, we have our uh, positions. Like, yeah. she's R&D. So, Kathy does all research and development, product development. That's what Kathy does. I'm in sales. You know, we've separated everything. My, my older son is production. My middle son's in packing. We don't overstep each other, like you just said before. We've all got our roles, and we respect our roles, and that's how you have to be. And time, 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 time. Take your time. Don't rush. Don't rush anything, because yeah. I've rushed in the past, and all you do is trip over. So yeah. it's just, it's just all your whole life. You've learned about structures, haven't you? Yeah. And how to apply structures with the, and, and then stress test the structures mm-hmm. to see if the structure carries the weight, and then you build on the structure. So all, all your life, what I've noticed is the fact of like you've built a structure and then before you've gone and built on those foundations again, you tested them mm. and then you build it again and then you test the foundation again because yeah. you can't build a high rise on the sand. 
That's right. Right. And there's a lot of people. We go. We're going into a hard time right now. Yeah. Right? We. 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 We've. We've been in it for a while. We've actually been in recession for a long time. Mm. Right. Mm. It's just been printed cash that's kept it up. That's right. It's. It. It. it, it every, every. Everyone with a hole in their ass should know that. That's right. But we're going into a time now where it's going to get a little bit. It's going to be a little bit difficult. Monetary policy is going to tighten up. How should people, you know, take ad, take advantage and, and create wealth and abundance in this time? Should they? What What would your advice be on that? Well, people are saying this is this is the best time to make money, but um, I've never seen a time like this. The last time it was GFC two thousand eight, I was in my own shit. That was the time I lost my house. That was the time that I humbled. was trying to re. Yeah, that was the time that I was trying to recoup. So this is my first time that I'm experiencing this. Will properties drop, and how much they drop? I don't know. The back res is down about fifteen percent at the moment. But don't forget, we've had an upside of about forty yeah. percent. So is it really down? Because we're up twenty five percent. Well, it, is, you it, know? is it really up though? Because let's just face it, right? Is, mm. it, is it really up? Because when you when you devalue money is the property value actually going up mm. real real term property values haven't actually increased in australia mm. when you actually break down the value of the mm. dollar mm. the value what's actually happened is the value of the dollar's gone down mm. that's why your house pro- pr- prices have have increased in terms of the dollar value on paper mm. but you've not even if you sold that property say you bought it for one and then it's increased to 1.5 even if you sell it for the 1.5 you've still got less money than when you had the one because the value of the money's gone down mm, mm. Right? and not a people a lot of people understand that because mm. they're just seeing the dollars on the sheet yes. the value the value of money has got i'd say in the last 2 years the value of money's probably gone down 40 fucking percent yes right yes that, that that that's kind of unheard of but it's like literally real time like when you you used to be able to go in and buy and them little cans of coke for like one dollar now the same now the same can of coke over here um cost 250 three dollars that sh- that that shows you inflation better than anything else because mm. that's 66 percent yes that's on right top, on top yes. of the, of the price so what so as a, as a, as as the value of money then has definitely gone down yeah. So how do, how 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 do how do they move into this and come out the other side of this with 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 more assets and less liabilities? <laughs> I'm like I said to you, this is I'm new to this too, Frankie. I'm actually new to this too, and I'm taking it day by day because we don't know what's going to happen in the first or second quarter of next year. I'm actually holding. I haven't bought anything for two years. All I'm doing is holding but, and waiting, you know, and waiting. Should I have bought the first first round like when? F- the pandemic first started because it started going up. Maybe kicking myself, I should have because they had a massive up. Um, but that, you, but but if you'd done that as well, you may have held, may have held them and took a little bit of a loss too. Yeah. So I. Because no, 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 no one sells at the top anyway. Yeah. Though. So we're just uh, Frankie. I'm waiting as well on this one. Do you go I'm anywhere? Waiting. Do you do you go anywhere near crypto and stuff like that? No. Right. No. no. What, if I can't drive past it, I won't buy it. Right, so you have to have something physical that you can see, touch, hold. So you're talking about gold? Gold, yeah. You're I talking, don't have gold. You're but talking gold. about watches. That's yeah, a beautiful yeah. watch, by the way. Thank you, mate. No, no, I, property. I don't have gold, but yes, gold, gold, silver. Um, but property, That's I'm a property guy. I love properties. Um, but at the same time, I know a lot of people have made a lot of money on crypto. I'm not knocking it. It's just that not my cup of tea. But there are a lot of people who have made a lot of money on crypto. So break down for me then your... Move into childcare centres. How many childcare centres do you have? So there? what's happening now is, I've um I've got another one on the go, but this one here is 136 places. So the way they they value the they value it per place. So if you've got 136 places, it's 3,900 a place. Right. So it works out to about 520,000 the first year, and goes up on increments of three percent. Wow. So uh, and the leases are like 15 years by 10 by 10 by 10. You got long leases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They pay the land tax. Depends who you do the deal with. So I've done it with a AAA tenant, which is an ASIC listed company. Um, they'll pay all the outgoings. And so the question then, and is I wouldn't sell it. Like a lot of people do the deal. Yeah. And they'll flip a 14, 15 million. I won't sell. I don't sell. Very rarely I'd want to sell. So you never sell any resi. No, resi. I'm getting resi. I'm getting out of resi now. I don't want resi um, because of like I told you. So I've just sold, actually last week I sold one in the peninsula, um, one of my resis, um, because I don't want to be in resi anymore. I don't feel as though, the capital growth's great, but I don't like the ROI anymore. I don't like it. Yeah. I mean, imagine having a property for one and a half million, two million, and you're getting 40, 50 clicks a year, 40 clicks a year for $2 million outlay. You know what I mean? It's just 
ridiculous. It, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, I, the, I don't like the, it. The apartment that I live in on the Gold Coast, I, like I don't even pay five, six percent of the value of the property to yeah. rent it. It's, it's, it's like, fantastic. It, 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 it's, it's great for, to for, rent. For, to be a renter now, it's fantastic. Yeah, um, rents are going up a lot yeah. in Australia, but it, but to me, I like the ability to move mm. because uh, you and, treat them like hospitals. Yeah, I, I just want to. St- I just want to stay. I want to use the facilities. I want to get inspired by the view. I want to. I want to rent the highest one with the best view at the, at the time. I want to use that view to inspire me to take me forward, and then I want to. And then I want to exit and go and get a better view. That's great. But providing you're using the money, your earned money, and you're investing your own money, because yeah. a lot of I know a lot of people that do that, and they've got spare cash because they're going. Look, I haven't spent six million on a penthouse. I'm renting it for a grand a week or fifteen hundred bucks a week. That's fantastic. But what are you doing with your earned income now? Don't I'm tell not, me you're I, spending it on cars and toys because now yeah. you're just doing in, nothing. I tell you what, I'm doing with mine. I'm spending it on podcasts. I'm spending it on talking to people I want to talk mm. to. I'm spending it on traveling to talk to people that I want mm. to talk to. I'm adding value to the world. I, I buy I buy some cryptos. I've obviously I'm obviously mortgage free. I don't have. I've got a car. I've got no. But is your plan eventually to pump money into property? Okay, my, my, my plan. and then you can keep renting. Yeah, and you can claim that as director's I, I will, accommodation. I will never live, as far as I'm concerned. Now I'll never live in a home that I own. Yep. I'll always live in someone else's place and rent it off them and pay them a fair rent for it. Yeah. I will buy assets that pay me and rent them out, and then I will live where I, I'll rent where I live. And you'll just claim it as director's accommodation. And, and I'll just claim it as a, I'll claim it and I'll always do the podcast in the place that I live so that I can claim it against my tax bill. And I can, cl- because I podcast in, because I'll podcast, I'll, I'll podcast in the lounge and I'll podcast in the office and the kitchen will provide the snacks and I can write off at least 80% of the, of the apartment, right? Whereas if I just kept it in one room, I can't do that. Yeah. So like, I film it on different rooms and I put it on YouTube and then the tax man can never argue with the fact that I don't use the whole apartment because he can see it on YouTube. I can say, mate, I've got 109 episodes of me using the apartment. Of course it's a fucking business. So, yeah. Look at me, it's there. That's it's it's right. in front of you. you there, there, there's ways you move and ways that top entrepreneurs have taught me how to operate over time. And I listen, man, I listen. That's, that's I, what I said. Because I, I don't fucking... Like a sponge. Yeah. Soak man. it all in. This, this is why, like, so with this podcast, like we were talking earlier, it's like the first the first person it has to serve as a person is you, the host, because you have to, I see a lot of these podcasts and the reason they go wrong is because they, they, they go and get all what I term the podcast whores on. So they go and get every guest that's been on every different podcast. I want to have unique conversations with people. I want to be yeah. unique you know, uniquely have with, and then I can share that value to the audience as a direct product of that mm. because it's the conversation's unique, isn't it? It's, it's not been heard before. It's not been done before. It's not been overdone. And that's where you get the most value. The top, top entrepreneurs, the people like yourself that are doing bits and business that are a bit more low key, they're not on every podcast because they're not as accessible as the easier ones to go that are just turn over a quick five, quick 10 mil. Gotcha. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So it's harder, it's harder, to, harder to land the guests that are doing the big numbers. Do you know 18, what I'm 18 months, was it? Yeah, like, like, like yeah, but, but, there's, but there's a lot of people out there. That's, that's why I do it, though. But, it's, it's but tell me about, um, I don't want it to be about you, because I know you want me, but I want to know more about you now. How was the UK tour? Because you went to UK, you went back to see your parents. Yeah. But you did a few podcasts there, I noticed. Yeah. I had tell a, me. So I had, I had the founder of, um, well, the guy that took the founders of Gymshark from four and a half mil to and and put and helped them put in the structure that allowed them to get to one point two bill. Yeah, yeah. Paul Richardson. Uh, I had. I did Iman Gadzi in the UK. I did Sam, who's Fortify. I did it when his pen out was in Dubai. I did the founder of Reebok. You know, these are bona fide people that have done big business. That's great. The founder of Grenades, the protein bars just launched over here. They're going to smash everyone in protein bars because what people don't realize is they've been bought out by Cadbury's. So they're going to put Cadbury's chocolate on a protein bar. They're going to put like Cadbury's ingredients like cream egg and all this kind of stuff, crunchy and all that into protein bars. And they will smash everybody clear as day because they're creating these collab brands now. Yes. At, so I just learned all that and I've got to meet all these top mate. I fucking love it, man. I can't tell you how... Because <laughs> I was watching from yeah. afar. I was watching yeah. you in the UK and I could see you having fun. I said, man, yeah. this guy's loving it over there. It, 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 and it, it was great. Because, because yeah, but then I, then I, then I realised, I sat there one day and I thought, right, it's time to go back to Australia and smash it in the teeth in terms of like... Because I, I get aggravated because I see podcasts over here and I'm like, fuck... Yeah 
I don't. It's like a. It's in it. This and I don't say this from any egotistical point of view. It's like I feel like it's a crime against podcasting that people would listen to an hour of that and not listen to an hour conversation like this mm. because mm. I think there's more value in this for them. Mm. So I thought, all right, you have to come back and yeah, and and like I say, today we're at number five. To, you know, next week might be at number forty seven. Who gives a fuck? But I came back to to serve to serve this country a, a bit more value and then and then once we've once we've got to where I've got to get to here I'll be going to America I'll be going to Dubai I'll be going to London again and I'll be getting the guests all over the world let me tell you something Peter right there's not a podcaster in this country that, 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 that's at the top level of Australian podcasting that has ever left the fucking country bro I know to go and do to go and, and do you it. don't do Zoom ones I noticed. I got a couple. I, I done. I've done like one or two Zoom ones. But yeah, I but out of a hundred and nine, that's quite good. But yeah, no, nah, no, nah, because because you do. You would spend the time to come out into someone's city. Do you know? And people don't realize it costs like, you money a lot. Yeah, yeah it costs you money to come out. I spent. I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on this podcast. Yeah, yeah you right? would have uh, of of free cash flow. Yeah, that, that you know what I'm saying to be because. That, that that's that's why like when people share it they shouldn't feel like aggravated that they've shared it because like that's just reciprocal value you mm. know what i'm saying like if i've give uh, trust me i've earned you i've earned that share trust me yeah i've done the i've done the i've done i've done things and like you're saying i've had to go through things that yeah but people don't see yeah. like you know what i'm saying like it's cost me millions of dollars in business by doing the podcast yeah of course right because, well, we're talking about it be- because, because you've people, lost revenue because, because I, of your time because i lose revenue because i put more time into this do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so I've lost money, and I'm putting cash into this, but because I believe in the in the greater good of what we're trying to achieve here, right? For everybody listening. But I love being part of your journey as well. As much as you um, wanted me on here after today and having our conversation before we started the podcast, I actually love being part of this journey because I know where it's going to be in the next few years, and I'm going to say, "Geez, man, I was on there when he wasn't making any money." Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, here's the thing. You know what I mean? This guy, this guy was travelling, you know, with a bag yeah, and yeah. a couple, you know, a, and a little uh, box. Yeah. He was going around, in, you know, podcasting, interviewing people. Yeah. Wasn't making any money, and now this guy's making some money, and I love that. Yeah. Like I told you, I'm a fan of that but, stuff. But, but, but you, but you, but, but even there's, there's, there's two caveats to that. You see what I do with the money when I make the money, and how I add value to the audience more when I when I do make money. First thing. Second thing is, people don't realise I've turned down about half a million US in deals for this podcast up until this point. You know that. Yeah. Right? You've seen that. Because I won't put anything onto the audience if I don't, if it doesn't align with my heart and my soul and my mission. I'm not here to sell you some bullshit. Yes. Right? So this podcast could have made money in the first 12 months. It could have been cash flowed, done. Right, it could have been cash flowing. We could be saying this podcast is sponsored by blah, 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 blah. get the protein powder. Type the name Frankie for fifteen percent off. Yeah, I could do all that shit. I could make a lot of money mm, out of that shit. Mm. But that's not. I play long term games with long term people. Right, Same. I, I have people on here that play long term games with long term people. What I'm trying to convey through this podcast, through my love, is that all the eighteen to thirty five year olds that listen to this podcast, especially you lot. I'm trying to convey the more long-term games with long-term people that you can play in your life, the better your life becomes. The more you can invest in assets, whether that be the right boyfriend, the right girlfriend, the commercial property, the residential property, yep. the econ brand, the fucking whatever it might be. The more you can invest in assets that, 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 that pay you back on the day and pay you back going forward. That's what I want you to get out of it. That's yep. why I'm so ju- – mate, I'm fucking juiced up doing this. I fucking love every fucking minute yeah. of it. Well, I didn't even think we were going to start talking about – Relationships, Kathy, it just flows that way, and I enjoy it. I yeah. really do because that's Kathy is a part of, of the business, Ka- and she's Ka- a massive, you know, Kathy, massive Kathy component. Is, yeah, Kathy. And and I'm glad you mentioned it because no one has ever asked me, and no one's ever said to me, "Hey, how's your other half?" Because I don't never see her on socials. You know how's and obviously I don't put her there because you get the occasional assholes that will put a comment and then I'm a firecracker and I'll start losing it. So you because try, you don't you try you don't, to protect you, your you wife. Don't, but you don't want to put you don't want to put your most prized asset that's in the right. firing line of, that's so, right. of someone's opinion on the internet who doesn't matter anyway. That's right. So uh, and I'm yeah I love the fact that you actually when you interview someone you actually get to the core when you say hang on it's not just you I can see you've got an army behind you Peter. You know, and I want to know more about this army. Who is it? Uh, my wife. Oh, wow. And what? Your 20-year-old son's 
a massive yeah. part of your business too. Yes, he is. And then we went into that conversation, and that was great, Frankie. I, I no, really I, enjoyed I, that. I appreciate it. So, that so, was good. I appreciate all of it, and, I, and like I say, this 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 is a total value play mm. to me. Like mm. it's, it's not when you. I, I'm telling you, right? I'm telling you. It's cold, <laughs> I'm telling you, right? Not only do I know where this is going to be, right? I don't think other podcasts get the messages, bro. I really don't. I don't. Yeah. I honestly believe, guys. If you listen to this, this the, 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 from the messages that I get, man, I, I fucking know that I'm that I'm making some fucking headway in some of your lives, and that fucking inspires me daily. Oh yeah, and I cannot tell you that enough. That gets me fucking yeah. juiced up. It's mad, isn't it? When you get a message, I yeah. get them too. When you get a DM coming through and saying, you know, you've changed my life because of, you know, I was at the I was at the Combosis fight on Saturday, Sunday, and I'm sitting there. There was a guy in front of me with his girlfriend and another bloke, a girlfriend, and he turned around and he said, "You're Peter, aren't you?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "Dude, he goes, you have inspired me to do what I'm doing." He's a refrigeration mechanic. He's got his own business, kicking on in his early twenties. He goes, "Just your videos and your little quotes has gotten me to where I am today." That to me, because I know how you feel, that to me was everything. It was more than the fight. Yeah, 100%. It was more than watching the fight because I go, wow, man, I've, I've actually impacted this guy's life. This is fantastic because that's all I want to do. Yeah, that's all. I, mate, I was never on these socials. I, my son got me onto this. My oldest son goes, Dad, you know what? You talk about it this all day. There's a lot of fluff on here. Jump on. Create a page. Start talking about business. Tell people how it really is meant to be. And that's how I started gaining momentum. Exactly what you're doing, I did it on my page. I started gaining momentum. Why? Because they, they, people cut through and see zero yeah, bullshit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real. And I've, been, yeah. I've met a lot of great people through social media. A lot of great entrepreneurs, you, you good get, businessmen. You, you, get, yeah. you, do get back and you do get back what you put out. I'll give an example, a quick example that people should spend more time, valuable time on on the internet, on socials, not bullshit. I, when I was on socials, when I started on Instagram, um, there was a bloke that always used to like my pages, put fire bombs, send me messages, fantastic, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I said, who's this guy? Constantly messages me. So I opened up the DM and um, I go to his profile. Very little, but he's in business. Had a service station in Adelaide, Okay. I hit him up. I said, what do you do, mate? I said, Fantastic. thank you for the comments or thank you for this and that. What do you do? He goes, oh, I, I own 30 sites, 30, 30 service stations in Adelaide. So this guy's, a, this guy's a player. This guy really, really is a true entrepreneur. I said, his name's Steve. I said, wow. I said, Steve, I've noticed in all your service stations, you've got little burger concepts. He goes, yeah. I said, well, where do you buy the sources from? He goes, oh, he told me. I said, hey. You're talking to the source king, mate. It's been, what, seven years now? I've been supplying all these stores and growing just by a message and just by communication that he actually values the messages that I'm putting out yeah, there. And yeah, he, yeah, yeah. yeah, and he... So the value you were putting out to the world allowed that conversation to start and then from you to, for you to notice him, you started the conversation you, and, then, and then business comes out. We're and good I, friends I, now. And, I, and we're good friends because of it. And I bet, I bet this happened. I bet he's paying less for his source. Yes. You're, so, he's, he, so he's made money because he's paying less now for the raw material and you're making money because he's using you. Yeah. And everyone wins, right? Yeah. And, that's, and that, that's the true art of social media. That's how you should be working social media. You know what I mean? And if a lot of people say if social media is not making you money, don't even bother being on it. If, when I say money, money is just a byproduct, let's say, of your value creation. We're saying anything. If it gives you motivation, that's considered as a currency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Motivation, inspiration, anything like that, use it to that advantage. Don't waste your time on these little TikTok videos and that. Like, proper use it to be inspired by a lot of people there's there's so many great entrepreneurs out there and fitness there's a lot of fitness guys out there that you can learn so much of fitness guys too i've noticed it yeah i've seen it i just want the fitness people on instagram to put as much emphasis into their businesses as they do their bodies because a lot of these fitness people i mean i've talked to a lot of the top level that do make money Mm. but there's a lot of level underneath that that have a lot of following but not a lot of money so 
the balance of it is like balancing the fact of like you have that much follow following, but how are you turning that into a into a currency? Yeah. But it's also about having a timeline to do that. See me, I'm happy to delay gratification in terms of monetary terms for for years because I've I've fallen in love and I and I'm in I'm involved with the reps and I know where I'm going. But but when you build a following and you don't know where you're going or you build something and you don't know where you're going, that's a problem now because now now that's when you can be open to doing things for money like some people who listen to this if they had been offered the money that i've been offered to do some of the shit that i've been offered money it's easy it's easy money day one but it's not easy money day fucking 27 when people when other people that trusted you have lost money that's right now you've got a fucking problem yeah now your integrity has been questioned that's right right so there's the, 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 you got to know social media is great but if you're going to build something when you start to build that momentum when you start to build that, that social currency in terms of the follows, the likes and all that's this right. shit. Think about something that could add value to those people that already like what you're putting out and then sell them that. Mm. You monetize off the back end by meeting top business people and then them having establishments that need source. Right? Example. That's that's a great... Property, b- commercial, agents. I meet, all, I meet them you, all. You meet them all, right? And you, you, all. You, you use the back end like that. Yeah. Other people... You, all of you out there that are building a following can use the back end to, you know, help people get more clients on social media. Help yes. this, help that, you know, whatever you got to do. But just, but just know that the business deals that you do should be in alignment with how you are as a human. Yes. Because then you're going to do good business deals. Yes. I am, I've got, I've got current deals going on even in this moment as we speak where I've, I've took deals on. Right, and I'm going to deliver these deals, but these, but these, on even on these deals, I'm going to lose money. Yep. Right, because because I'd rather lose money on some of these deals and deliver the deliver what I said I was going to deliver, than than make than 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 make money or not deliver the not deliver the deal. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes sure. you have to take a few licks in business, is what I'm saying. Oh well, I've done it many times. And it's man. like sometimes sometimes it's like you've got to be willing. To, to lose money because this client's going to be with you on for a, lo- for a long time. Many times I've done it. I've taken hits many times. I've lost countless amount, uh, countless amount of product because the client doesn't want it. He says, yeah. oh, you know what, give me five tonne of this. And then before you know it, look, we've changed the menu. Yeah. We're not going with that We're anymore. We need two tonne. Now you've got three tonne, you've got to throw away. Many times. Frankie, I've done it so many times. I know. Yeah. I know. And, and, and in, in the game that I'm in, it's just, it's just like you win some, you lose some, yeah. And you take a lot of licks, yeah. I've had to do, and, and I had to add a lot of value to the world for free in the early days too, mm. right? Mm. Just like I'm doing with this podcast, I had to do the same in business. I had to add a lot of value to the world by removing a lot of content for free early doors, yeah, right? To get to get the reputation that I have in the industry, yes. To get the big, to if you want the big record companies in America to reach out to you and one of their artists. You know, goes and goes and puts the sex tape out there that shouldn't be out there in the world. If you want to be the guy that removes that content for those kind of people, you have to have the trust with the with the brands with the reps. That's right. Right? How do you think that's built? You don't. You, they're not just ring you up random off the internet. You got to earn it. You got to earn it, right? And how you do you earn it? it? You got to give it, give it for free. You got to right? give it for free. It's no different to what I'm doing with this yeah. podcast. It's, it's no, that that's just an analogy I wanted to give you all for life. But that's that's if you you're doing that with a podcast, and that is exactly the right. That is the if they want to know the secret to success, that is the secret. That's what it is. Yeah. That's Offer it. value, don't expect anything in return, and it will multiply. Yep. You know? Yeah, and delay and delay the gra- and and be willing to delay the gratification for five to ten years rather than the one to two years that you think it's gonna take. Because Boom. everything everything that you think you can achieve in one year you've overestimated yeah like in terms of like you 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 will achieve far less in 12 months than you ever think you can Mm. right Mm. because people overestimate what they can achieve in 12 months and underestimate what they can achieve in five to ten years yeah i guarantee you if we look back in this in another three to ten three to ten years time uh, three to eight years time from now i will have because i've put no emphasis on the on the on the attachment to the outcome i am i imagine the outcome for me will be far greater than I could have ever imagined if I'd attached myself to it from day one. Well, I'm glad you've got that mindset because that takes years to have a mindset like that. People don't think that way, Frankie. They want it now. They they actually plan it. Within a year, I have to be at that level. Yeah. And that's what crushes them because when, when it comes to that year and they're not there, they actually give up. Yeah. They go, well, I'm not doing it anymore. Then they move to the next one. Yeah. It'll take them another year. 
I'm not doing it again. They're chop and change. They're the ambitious ones that I said, the ambitious, lazy ones that they're not, they haven't got the time to spend on one craft. Spend that time on one craft. Ten years, ten years, five years, five years, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. And it will, I don't know anybody that hasn't spent, like I told you, countless hours on something, all right, discipline, determination, grit on one particular craft and hasn't succeeded. I know everybody, everybody yeah. that's done that has succeeded. I just want you to break down one more thing as well before we before we go, because a lot of people will look at your Lamborghini for argument's sake and get inspired by it. Mm. I just want to break down that structure of how you've and of how you've funded that, just so that it's really clear before we exit, like how you've done it. So you go and you, you'll say, "I want to." You, well, if you've got for argument's sake, the the Lamborghini or anything. I the watch, the anything, the, the, the anything that, yeah. the any luxury items yep. should not be bought from a business cash flow. This is my philosophy, and I've taken it from wealthy people. Okay, your cash flow should be there to circulate within the business and keep the business healthy. Cash flow from property, all right, you can then use to buy a car. If you want to pull out, you can pull out some equity of it. And buy the car because that's we're talking about. Let's talk about round numbers. If you're getting a hundred thousand dollars rental a year, two hundred thousand dollars rentals a year from properties, okay, they then if you want, you can even high purchase the car. It does not matter which way you do it. They're paying for the car. Your business has nothing to do with luxury items, okay? It shouldn't be that. It shouldn't be in reverse. Yeah. I had a conversation with one person once, and I said, "Do you own any properties?" And he said, "No." I said, "But what about cash flow?" My business has got my cash flow. I said, yeah, but if your business shuts down tomorrow, what are you going to do? Oh, it won't. I, it won't. That's what's called business. At the end of the day, it's here today. It could be gone tomorrow. Your competitor can come in tomorrow and wipe you out. You never. I, the only time I spend my business money is when it goes back into infrastructure. We need a new machine, 250 grand, back into the infrastructure. That will just circulate on its own. Cash flow from your properties can buy your luxuries. No matter how which way you work it out, you want to high purchase it, you want to pay for it in cash, you want to redraw, pay for it in cash, whatever you want to do, that's on this side of the fence. So you so you buy the properties to allow yourself to buy the Rolex or the or the Lamborghini or anything like that, and then the cash flow in the business that just gets you started in the property game. Yeah, but that that can that can fun, that can fund if any excess money is from your uh, businesses that can deposit and fund your properties. Right, and go that way. I love it. Okay. So you but funnel you, it in. Funnel it in. You funnel it in. Do not use cash flow, earned money. Which camera am I looking at, Frankie? Any of them. Do not use your earned money to buy luxuries. Use passive income to buy your luxuries. And you create the passive income from, the, well, Peter's created it from properties and commercial assets like child, well, and child care. Child care, industrial properties, resi. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, mate. And if there's one... One final piece of advice then that you could give, if you had to check out the world tomorrow, you can't leave the Lamborghini, you can't leave the property, but you could leave just this one pearl of wisdom, this this one absolute piece of gold that you know is going to impact every member of this audience listening right now, what would it be? Wake up and know you've given it your all every day. You wake up with a, a sense of energy that today is going to be my day, okay? That's all you need to do. It's just start. Start your day with the mentality of, today's going to be a great day, I'm going to go out and kill it. You're going to always have problems. Problems will always be there, you know what I mean? And life isn't fair. People have to understand that. Life is not fair, you know, and I understood it the hard way. I used to think everything's, you know, roses, you know, there's always going to be cash flow coming through. And I, Whatever I'm preaching now, I did the opposite. And I know a lot of people are. I did the opposite. I was using my business cash flow and I was funding BMWs, trips, this. It didn't get me anywhere. All I did was just milk my business to nothing. Okay? It took me the downfall and come back up again and do it the right way. I always knew that I was doing it the wrong way, but I didn't care. So what I would say is get up every day, focus on your craft, be disciplined. That's the wisdom that I'll give. Be disciplined, take the punches, but keep moving forward. Yeah, actually, you say that on my quotes every day, yeah, yeah. and keep moving forward. That's I love it. it. That's it, Frankie. And guys, that is Peter Try. Obviously, he's done it. He's done it all. He's going to do a lot more. I'm 
Costco is going to be a massive, massive deal. Going yeah, we're, we're in discussions. Actually, we've just um, – we're in Costco New Zealand as well, obviously Costco nationally, uh, and we're talking to Costco US now. We have FDA approved now for Costco US. That's, that works differently now. You work in regions there, West Coast and so forth. Um, but that's going to be a huge step for us. Even, even with Costco here, um, we just put the dipping tubs in Costco last month. And that, for me, brought a tear to my eye because – we're talking about someone that used to put dipping tubs on shop counters, fish and chip shop counters and chicken bar counters. And now I'm in a global giant with the dipping tubs. Yeah. yeah, that was huge for me. It was huge for me. You know, we're moving it through 15, 16 locations here. And we've got to remember something. Each Costco will probably turn over six times a Woolies. You know? Powerful. They're, oh, they're, they're a global giant. They're, they, and then when you, when, you, when you drop into, uh, into the American market and you get infrastructure built there and all this kind of stuff, which is going to come all down the track. That's what just, I can't it, wait for. It just, it, just, it just takes you to a whole... Yeah. And it could, be, it could be like a billion dollar source company. And I don't care how long it takes, man. Yeah. I don't care. I don't get distracted by other people. I don't care what they do. I focus on myself. You know, I'm a fan of everybody's work. I love what people do. I'm a great observer. I soak everything in, but I do never. I never get distracted of. Oh, he's doing that. Maybe I should do that. The grass is green on that side. Or oh, he's doing that. Maybe I should get into that. No, you don't. You don't. You don't let the let it take you off the game. That you're no, in. not at all. But but here's what I want you to remember as well as we leave this podcast. Peter might be in the source game. But it's backed by real estate the same way that McDonald's were a restaurant, but they were backed by real estate as well. That's right. And, and actually, that's where th- that inspired me. That story inspired me too. Yeah. Because I just want, I just, uh, that's, what, that's what's clear to me is, is that all these top brands look at, look at, uh, are backed uh, by the commercial and industrial state. Oh, of course. State. Look at, um, there's a Greek family here called uh, Stamoulis family. Right. It'd be great for you to get Harry on if you could. Okay. What, what do you mean if I could? You're yeah, going yeah, to hit me okay, on, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> Introduce uh, me, bro. Well, that family is a $500 million network fam, uh, net worth family. And they started from gold medal drinks. Drinks. Yeah. Okay. They were making drinks and they'll distribute it to homes. To homes. They weren't even in Woolies and Coles. They were distributing to homes. Okay. And then hit the dad, all right, would be buying property. Everything he had left over would be buying property. They own the majority of these car parks. We're seeing the city now. Majority yeah. of the car parks are owned by the Samuels family. You know, another one. I'll give you another one. Con Macris, $1.2 billion family. Greek family, Con Macris. He started with chicken shops. Chicken shops in Adelaide, okay? Chicken shops. What was he doing? Into property, into property, into property. You know, it does not matter what you do as long as you invest right. Sacrifice investor. And if you look at the top 60% of the world's mil- millionaires, tens of millionaires and billionaires, mm. they're, all, they're all backed up on, they all, they've all got a mass amount of real estate because, yeah. because it's not just a fa- fact of like how much money can be made in passive cash flow. It's, it's, the, cap- it's the capital and, and, how, and how cheap capital becomes for you to loan against it. That's right. So it's, where, it's, where the, it's where this secret everyone's looking for is. But Peter, try. Thank you so much. Thank brother. you so much. Thanks. And guys, do me a solid favour, yeah? If that has added the value to your life that I hope it has do me a solid favour man share it on, on, on your socials share it with your friends DM your friends put it in the WhatsApp group girls and boys alike I appreciate all of you and I hope you can understand what I'm trying to achieve and do in the podcast game for all of you and uh, we're going to send it to a whole new level trust me on that Peter try 100%. Peter try let's go ciao ciao don't forget to subscribe to the Frankie Lee podcast